headed home alone. Without the usual friends to hide behind, waves of worry echoed out around me. I made it two blocks before I saw them. A magnet of kids materialized from a side street. One was Sammy Gosbin. I wanted to turn and bolt, but I knew that would draw their attention. A rabbit on the run is exciting prey. I crossed the street hoping they would miss seeing me. But even with every nerve on high alert, my fear drew them in like a vacuum. Hey, little midget! Sammy's voice called out as he ran across the street. Where are you going in such a hurry? Oh, God, here he comes. I tried to move faster, but my arthritic legs were no match for the group. They were at my side in a flash. Look, Sammy yelled. He walked next to me on his knees, mimicking my gait. His face was down at my level now, spit bubbling at the corner of his mouth. I'm a dwarf, too. Look at me, another one called, getting down on his knees as well. How old are you, runt? My heart wailed silently in terror and humiliation. Hey, I said, how old are you, shrimpy? I bit down hard on my agony, staring straight ahead as I moved through the gauntlet. Shrimpy, shrimpy, they surrounded me with their laughter, and it might as well have been a whole schoolyard of kids closing in, eager to pounce. Turmoil raced through me, spinning me up in their taunting. I pushed forward but couldn't speak. My voice was choked on rage. Sammy's voice continued to mock me. Is the little baby going to cry all the way home? Voices suddenly floated in the yard up ahead. So they decided to end their game or get caught. Bye-bye, little Midgey. See you, Shrimpy. I watched their retreat, making sure they were gone. Adrenaline cycled furiously under my skin as my mind screamed the words I had not. I hate you. I hate all of you. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? My knees throbbed as I kept up the pace. Two blocks away from my house, and I never felt farther from home. That was Sammy. And later, I ran into him at a wedding. I didn't know the two getting married knew him, or I'm not sure I would have gone. We were walking down the aisle, a friend and I, and so we sort of had to talk to him. And my friend engages him in conversation, and as I watch him and I listen, he says, I'm DWI, I don't have a job, I'm living with my dad. And I suddenly think, this was the guy I was afraid of? And I'm seeing the little boy who was lost, who was lashing out at everyone else because he was hating himself and hating his situation. And suddenly it wasn't personal. I wished I had known that back then. Yes, I look different. Certainly I become a target, but it was about him. It was about his insecurity, his pain and rage. We shared that in common. I had that as a bond with Sammy, who I never thought I would have anything in common with, ever. You know, we all feel we have these flaws and weaknesses, and if you're able to hide them, like I was not able to do, it's actually more difficult. Because you can go on a long time pretending you're someone you're not. I had to really look to see Am I this body, or am I more than that? Am I what's inside? Am I my character? Remember the game Pin the Tail on the Donkey? Did you guys play that, or is that just my generation? (laughs) Yeah, see, Mr. Sproha remembers. (laughs) Well, yeah, (laughs) that's the game. Um, I hated that game. I felt out of control enough, I didn't want to blindfold on myself and then have others spin me around and send me in the wrong direction. That's not a game. That's torture. But other kids thought it was great fun. And I realized this was an interesting metaphor for my life, was that my 
body was the blindfold. And it's everybody's blindfold. Because we stuff a consciousness, a spirit, character into this physical form, and then suddenly we're completely distracted and obsessed with the form. And we gotta feed it, we gotta take it to the bathroom, we gotta make sure it doesn't smell, we gotta try and make it fit in, we gotta try and make it be athletic when it's not. It is the thing that is spinning us around and away from the point of the game. We forget it was about the joy. It's about the joy of being here, the adventure, the challenge of this life. It's a challenge. You know, being human is a handicap. It's a big one for everyone. You're not alone in whatever way you feel slighted by life or whatever losses you've sustained, whatever ways you feel looked down on. Everyone else has their handicap. You may not see it, but it's there. Mine was very visible. That turned out to be a benefit for me. And whatever is vexing you right now is someday going to serve you if you keep looking for the meaning in it and the way in which it's taken you off course from that joy that you came here to experience. That game of being part of this incredible group here, of that, that that honor to have this opportunity is, is blotted out when we're obsessed with what other people think. You no longer can feel what's going on in you, that joy and the love you knew as a little kid. We all have it. We all come in with it. There's an innate wisdom in you that's been covered up. I know you're under a lot of pressure here. This is a prestigious school. You're in a prestigious town. And there's a lot of pressure to be something maybe you're not, or to be more than you think you are. It's whichever way you look at it. <laughs>